start singing, just a reminder to you, obviously you, you got the memo, but uh, don't forget that uh, Sunday morning in particular, Sunday night, Wednesday night, not necessarily, but Sunday morning in particular, um, we feel like we're here in a village and that uh, even if there's so much snow on the ground that the only people that can get here are those who walk, we should have the doors open for Sunday morning services. And so I will always be here on Sunday morning, of course, unless I'm having a heart attack or something, but I'm not talking about that. Ooh, so, about that. Uh, so uh, but I will always be here on, on Sunday uh, morning, even in the snow, and we will do the best we can to have services. You make the decision on whether it's safe for you to come, and if you come, we will be here. Okay? Um, and, uh, I, you know, we'll do the best we can. Uh, there are times that we haven't been able to get a whole lot of the driveway open over the years, but we used what we could to get you into where you could park and park four or five deep, and we had to pull everybody out to get out. We've done that before, one, one strip down through there. Whatever we can do, we do, and I'm working on it, I promise you. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can, and we'll always be ready uh, for you to, to come, even if, and I, I do mean this without meaning any disrespect, even if the state says no one's allowed on the road, I will have the doors open because I don't have to go on the road to get here, and I think it's the right thing to do in a community. So um, don't, don't forget that, and we'll be here, all right? Okay, let's sing. I think that's it, it on those type of things. I got a letter I want to read you, but let's let's sing. 442. 442. I know whom I have believed. Let's stand together as we sing.
but uh, I figured uh, Heather, yes. Got another friend. Yes. She, directly across the she, street. She, right across the street. We're going to have a law firm. Yeah, she, yeah, she right. has come by before, and she is always welcome. I had that you feel welcome to come out with us today. We're glad you're here. So, um, Heather is uh, singing for us today. And, and uh, I'm sure Heather is saying, you started late, Pastor, because you're over there messing around, taking a shower. And I want to get, I'm, I'm not saying you truly are saying this. I want to get this done with. I need to, I need to sing. I'm nervous. I, I want to get to do this. And... All right, Heather.
to sing Rejoice in the Lord. So, how do we do this? Okay. Um, Hank, you're over here. And, and I'm over here. Five or six. Sorry, five or six. Is the words too loud now? Yes. Um, so, you're, you're leading that group, and you do number one. You, you start with number one, and then we'll come in. Uh, as group number two, after they get to the number two, you see number two on there, we'll come in and start at the beginning. Okay? <coughs> now, <laughs> and when we, when we get really good, we'll do three and four, right? Right. How many times four? How many times two are we doing? She said twice, at least twice. So right. <laughs> Alright, you get to start. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, 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 rejoice and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Kevin and Janice moved in with him. 
Soon the time came when he needed additional help. A place opened up for Dad to move to assisted living at Shepherd's Care, where he enjoyed great fellowship with many longtime friends. Last July, just after his birthday, Dad moved again to skilled nursing at Rolling Green Village, where he also received excellent hospice care. Hanging on the wall by Dad's bed was a brass tray with the words from Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the circular edge were the words, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.29. The tray was made by a Muslim in Beirut, Lebanon, who custom tap hammered into the brass the requested verses. I don't know if that registers with you what... That's amazing. His testimony to get a Muslim to tap that verse. Okay, when I think of, of Dad, those last few months on earth, it was evident that he was not just looking at those words, but was living them out even to the end. Those who cared for Dad told us how blessed they were to help. They also loved his sense of humor. Dear friends from around the world sent cards and letters, and many friends stopped by to visit. Kevin and Janice and some of the grandchildren were there singing hymns as Dad's breathe and breathing faded, and he entered into the presence of the Lord. John flew in from Japan, and my family drove from New Mexico for the funeral that was held at Hampton Baptist, uh, Park Baptist Church on December 16th. Uh, pictures were shown of Dad's life, which you can view at, and there's a Thomas McAfee Dot com thing that you could look up. Besides a clear gospel message and tributes given, all ten grandchildren sang it as well with my soul. Even Dad's caregivers were there to honor a man who had touched their lives. The, the next day we traveled to Tennessee where Dad's body was laid to rest in the Newland Family Cemetery near where Mom grew up and where she met Dad 60 years ago. There is no way to put into words the emotion of the moment spent at the gravesite. And yet we did not grieve as those who have no hope. Now we have returned to the ministries to which God has called us. John and Becky will return to the States for a long overdue furlough in April. Kevin and Janice at Buttram are praying about returning to the mission field in God's timing. Ann and I are back at Broken Arrow Bible Ranch. Inscribed on Mom and Dad's memorial stone are the words, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. To God be the glory, with love, from the youngest, Steve Knox. So, there's a, a letter from one of our missionaries that we supported, I would say, I don't know, what, 44 years, or something like that. Um, pretty much all of their, their time on the, on the mission field, um, we, we were there, if not for every year, we were pretty close to the start. Um, and that's, that's an awesome letter of great praise and testimony. Uh, and again, we've often pointed to him as one of the great examples uh, with all of his children, just like the Stottlemyers, all of them on the mission field. It says an awful lot about the missionaries you support. Um, not that they should all, and they always have to, but it also means that they have presented things in such a way that it's not something kids try to run from either. So it goes both ways, and it's very, it's wonderful to see. All right, let's, let's uh, look into the Word of the Lord together. We're studying prayer. Been on this theme for a little while now. Every week I say I'm going to preach something different, and every week I come back to prayer. Maybe we still need to work on it. Um, today we're going to talk about the will of God. The will of God for all of us. Now, would you agree with me that God's will for us is that we pray? Yes. In fact, it's a great part of communication with God, and so God wants us to spend that time with Him. Just like you enjoy uh, talking to each other, your loved ones that are far away on the phone, and so forth. You, you look forward to the times that they would call and talk to you and spend time with you, because... It's an opportunity uh, to, to stay acquainted and to, to stay together, to, to know each other's thoughts and to think about. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite a change for me having my parents, my mother, move closer and, and uh, uh, you know, not spending so much time on the phone talking to her about things because she's right here. And, and it's quite a difference. Um, 
God wants us to have this prayer mentality where we are spending time with Him and getting to know Him on a regular basis. But I wanted to think today with you uh, along a special part of the will of God in prayer. And I want to point out to you that and I know these are frequently used verses. And typically they're, they're separated. We're in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. They're typically uh, separated out. And we don't want to do that today. We're starting with verse 16. The little small verses. I'm sure I have even preached on these to you. But typically probably in a separate mentality. But as I was studying about prayer and thinking about what the Lord would have us to bring today. I, I was thinking... The will of God for us, very clear, stated in verse 18, is not in reference to just thanksgiving. I think the will of God for us is, is all of what we're going to look at, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, maybe even you could include the, the not rendering evil for evil. And we pointed out to you in other weeks, uh, verse 15, we pointed out to you in other weeks that that if we're praying right, we'll, we'll have less of a tendency to react incorrectly. And if we take, the moment something pops into our head that maybe we need to squelch, if we take that and give it to God, it would help us to stay right and to make the right decision and to do the right thing in the process. If we could get to that place. So maybe you'd even say more than this section. But I want you to see the theme of this section. And, and you tell me if you can pick it out. Verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. And verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God. Now, what is the theme of those three small statements? Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and give thanks. What is the theme? Don't stop. Well, part of it is don't stop, because it's evermore. That's very good. It's evermore, it's without ceasing, and in all things. Okay? So it's a don't stop theme. What are we not stopping? Is it prayer? Well, maybe. It's an overall attitude that's part of prayer, isn't it? Prayer is one of the three things mentioned, and it's, it has to do with an attitude of, of praising of happiness, of thankfulness. So what does God want me to do nonstop? Well, He wants me to, to rejoice in everything. He wants me to pray at all times. And He wants me to give thanks. And all three of these, I think, point to an attitude that He wants in me. An attitude that says, I refuse to stay depressed. I'm down right now. I'm going to get my, my gear together because I'm going to get into the Word and I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God to fix my heart. I'm not going to be down about this. Okay? It's an attitude that says, I want to rejoice. I want to be happy. I want to give the right kind of mentality as I talk to others and as I do things. Um, I have a girl on my basketball team. Uh, very good basketball player. Extremely good. Um, this girl is uh, quite talented. Um, at, at a junior high level, she scored well over 100 points this year, which is, is kind of crazy. That's an average of uh, 10 a game. Um, and at, at junior high, that's hard to do. Okay? And th this girl, though, she had a couple of games where she didn't score any. So what could she have done if she had scored during those games because she was having a rough time shooting? But the thing is, is I could tell you by looking at this girl how she was going to play the moment she was warming up <coughs> because it all depended on her smile. If she were smiling, she was going to play great today. If she had put pressure on herself, maybe maybe we're going to play against a Gerstel, which is uh, a, a big money school, and they recruit people, and they've got a lot of trees, and let's just tell you, they pretty much stomp us. Okay? She put a lot of pressure on herself. She's not smiling, and she played horrible. Okay? It was her smile, and I tell her that. If you'll start having fun again... Things get a lot easier, and the team goes with you. Now, she wasn't even the captain, but her smile 
infected everyone else and took them right along and made the game more fun and elevated everyone else's game. Here's my point to you. I think in Christian circles, if we would start to, to, to recognize that our lack of smile, our attitude problem, heading into a situation causes some of the problems of failure, and if we start heading in with the rejoice evermore, the always have an attitude of I can talk to God, the doors are open, and that I'm going to give thanks for whatever He does, the end result would be the smile would infect others. And we'd make a great difference in our world. Many Christians right now, they, they walk around with the woe is me, uh, our world is coming undone mentality. Now look, I don't like stuff that's happening, but the, the honest truth is, what's that got to do with God? He's still on His throne. And there's for us to be thankful about. I get to meet in a service on Sunday morning right here and not worry about anybody coming through that door and telling me I'm not allowed to do it. I get to preach to you whatever I believe this book says. And unless one of you runs for president, nobody ever comes in here and cares what that is. That was a joke. Because they're sleeping. Yeah. I, I'm serious that, that we get the ability to preach the Word of God. We're, we have so much to be thankful for. Okay? I, I think that we're lacking the Christian smile. The, the attitude of, it's all good. I praise the Lord. I'm ready to rejoice. Hey, I'm on good terms with God. Not, I'm a little bit annoyed with God that He didn't do what I said, so I'm not really in a pray mood. I think that's what really is the evidence of this passage. And I'm going to give thanks. When we approach things that way, I believe we are prepared to live the game of life. And we're going to do a much better job. One of the things I would say about my father growing up, uh, many of you know that I'm a very competitive person. Um, a very competitive person. Um, I, I push myself. It, it's never allowed to be uh, just, just whatever happens. It's i got to do better. Um, it's section off something and do it. It's work on a row of beans and try to be two minutes faster or pick a half a bucket more or it's always something. Always something you're doing to yourself in a competition style. But the thing that my dad taught me with that wasn't so much the competition that most people focus on. He taught me to have fun. To make it fun for myself. You're standing there doing a boring job. I'm putting together at 13 years old lawnmowers for a, a hardware store. A boring job. Doing it over and over and over again. Well, it wasn't boring to me. You know why it wasn't boring? Because my father said, get up your stopwatch. Okay. I'm trying to do number one. Okay, 15 minutes. That's horrible, Andrew. You got to do faster than that. They don't fire you to do 15 minutes. That, that's what I'm doing to myself. Get the next one out. Put it down hard. We've got to do 15 minutes this time. <laughs> it's fun. The attitude made it to where everything was so much easier. I'm telling you folks, we need to get to the place where prayer, our mentality with God is constantly rejoicing, constantly having the right relationship so we can talk to God about it, and constantly giving thanks. And when we do, it becomes so much easier. It becomes a lot more enjoyable. I don't know about you, but I had to pick up rocks every day out of my dad's garden. Every day. Bucket after bucket. Wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow. As I got into my upper teenage years, I used to ask my father, was he taking those wheelbarrows and dumping them back in there and mixing them back up with the tiller? How does he get so many rocks? What in the world are you growing this stuff? Do you know what I do? I, I, I coach a baseball team. 
And in essence, the field is considered to be mine. I'm going to prepare it and I'm going to take care of it. And guess what I do a lot of? Picking up rocks. And the boys come out there. This is stupid. Why do we got to pick up rocks? Why do we? Well, I can pick up more rocks than you can. That's right where I go. <laughs> That's my father. I can fill my bucket faster than you can. Hey, come here. You two help me. We're going to beat them. And make it fun. Happy attitude. Forget that nasty me, me, me. Why do we got to do this? Just do it. But have fun. Folks, again, I, I know this is a simple message. It really is a simple message. But we spend too much time whining at God about what we don't want to do or what we didn't think he should have done or what he allowed or what... And if we just said, okay, I'm going to rejoice in this. I'm going to give thanks for it, and I'm going to keep the lines open. Imagine what it would do. you think the task would become easier and maybe a lot more enjoyable? Do you think it would be such a burden to us? When I visit people, I'm going to tell on some folks that are no longer around, okay? And then I'm going to tell my daughter, too, but it's all right. <laughs> when I visit some people, uh, days when Ariana was three, four, five years old, I, I'd go out and I'd say, we're going to go visiting. And she'd say, who are we going to visit, Daddy? And I'd say, we're going to go visit so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so. -and -so. Oh, that's great. Uh, can, can we go to McDonald's afterwards and get me a fries? <laughs> Something like that, right? I'd say, sure, honey. And we also have to visit the Barracks. Will you take me home? <laughs> the, the Barretts were an older couple that their, their house they, they ran it like 95 degrees even in the summer it was ridiculously hot and I, I'm not kidding either the point to where I could not I could not enter into their house and be tired because I promise you this I'd fall asleep sitting up talking to them because it was hot and they also had all boys, and so their toys were all boys. So that meant she had to sit on my lap. And Mr. Barrett would, would spin yarns, and his yarns would be about wanting to know if I knew the farmer in New Windsor, three farms over from the farm that's just down the road, and did I know the farmer that owned that farm, three farmers before the farmer that's in it now? <laughs> no, Mr. Barrett, I don't know any of those. Um, did you know that his grandson was in the Civil War? I'm like, yes, something I'd like to hear about. Well, he ate goes right off to meet somebody else and nothing to do with it. <laughs> and it was that kind of conversation. The whole time he's having that kind of conversation, Mrs. Barrett would sit on the other end of the heater that was running at full blast and would talk at the same time, wouldn't, wouldn't she? They both talked to me at the exact same time, not, neither one of them having a conversation with each other and me. They both had conversations with, I'd be answering this one, he'd keep right on talking. I'd be answering the answer, she'd keep right on talking. Okay, now, how do you visit somebody like that? Say lots of prayers. <laughs> it might be, but the honest truth is, I made it to where I enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm not trying to be an idiot. I'm trying to tell you to think the way you ought to think. I made it to where I enjoyed it. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, I'm going to be prepared for them. I'm going to think of some questions that he doesn't know. <laughs> and he always kept you way too long. But you know what? I wanted to make it to where it was fun. This is a challenge to make it to where I, I don't feel like falling asleep. And I have fun, and that they know I genuinely want to be here and listen to them. Okay? You and I can make anything more enjoyable if we approach it with the attitude of, I rejoice in every situation, evermore. I'm keeping the line open with God. I'm not going to say, why are you making me do this? And we give thanks. That, to me, is very much missing in Christian service. And even, even me, I can have a tendency to be a whiner, a grumbler, 
Can't believe it. You remember two weeks ago I told you all the bad things that happened in one week and how I focused on that? See, we can all be that way. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to remember all the great things that God's doing that you didn't ever give Him credit for because you're so focused on what you're whining about. And He does a lot of great things. We, we, we need to learn that God clearly says, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Might include other things. Might include before verse 16, okay? But at least we know part of what God's will for me is, is that I rejoice evermore. By the way, the word there, rejoice, means be glad. It's not a difficult, deep word. It's be glad. Be happy. That's the word. I'm glad in everything I do. Um, evermore is always and at all times. Okay? Pray without ceasing. Without ceasing is, is a word that means constantly, unceasingly. Okay? And then, of course, give thanks in all, all things. That's the same thing. Okay? Now, look at the end of this verse here, the next, the next one, verse 19, because I think that we should be very careful to realize that if we're not... Now, maybe there's other things that should be included from before verse 16. But if we're not doing 16 through, through 18, one of the things that we're going to do in our own lives is look at verse 19. Quench not the Spirit. I think we have a tendency in this part of the passage. You know, over in chapter 4, we, we put everything together and we read a wonderful flowing story. But in this part of the passage, we like to preach one, you know, little sermons on, on three letter, uh, three word uh, verses. And we ignore everything around. But folks, I want you to see that one of the ways that you quench the Spirit is when you have a bad attitude. When you're not rejoicing in everything, it makes a huge difference when you're doing a job, you're picking beans, or a five-gallon bucket of blackberries, just so you can go inside and set it down and be told, now go pick a three-gallon bucket of beans, and then you can go back inside so you can be told, pick up that wheelbarrow load of rocks. You know what? As I've told you before, I love doing those things. I do. I do not look at that and say, oh, this is terrible. Charlotte Duff used to say, Andrew, I've picked all I can for today. Would you come pick some beans? And I'd go over there and pick all the beans I thought. Freeze them, put them away, save them, eat them. I love it. And I can now pick any of you. I'll take you on. Get your bean patch, I'll, I'll race you. I can out, maybe not you. You're, you're pretty good. Never could beat you. That's my dad. Seriously. Seriously, I, I want you to understand that, that I like doing stuff like that, even though it was chore after chore after chore. I, I love going over to Balgers, and I love picking the strawberries. And I love saying to myself, oh, there's a Mexican. I can beat him. I can work here. I can beat the Mexican that works for them. That's exactly the, oh, yeah, I can beat him. Let's go, buddy. He's a full-time worker here. I can, I can beat him. That's, that's me. And I have fun. Folks, we quench the spirit when we say, why do I got to go pick strawberries? Why do I got to go pick you know what? You go out there and your mood stinks. And guess what you do? You kick the dart around. You stretch your back. You try to pick for two minutes and then you say, Oh, I need a bucket to sit on. You go get the bucket and then you come back. And then you say, Oh, man, there's some thistles in there. I want to get something that I can get those out. You go through thing after thing after thing, wasting time. When it really needs to be, just do it. Have fun. Get it done. I'm not going to keep beating it, but I want you to see, we quench the spirit when our attitude stinks. So spiritually speaking, if we're going to talk about prayer, 
maybe a good part of your prayer shouldn't be so much of the attitude stinking. You know, as in God, I'm kind of really begging you to do this thing here and I'm mad at you about it. And But instead, God, I'm thankful for all these things you did do that I never talk about in this prayer time. Maybe it should be, Lord, I rejoice in what I saw today and what I saw over here and what I, you know, you, you can look at everything two different ways, as a pessimist or as an optimist. You can see the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. You can see the snow coming down as being a major problem and I can't believe the Lord allowed this to happen. Or you can say, Lord, thank you for giving us the safety as we traveled through Huge attitude differences make a huge difference in how we do the work. You want to do great things for the Lord? Then rejoice in all things. Have a good relationship with God where you're actually happy with what He's doing. And thank Him for it. I'll tell you, it'll be wonderful. Does that mean nothing bad will ever happen to you? No. But it means when it happens, then... Your Superman gene kicks in and says, bring it on. Let's go. God, you put this here. You want me to deal with it. All right. Different attitude. And I will tell you, by the way, that some people would call it a sports killer instinct. They bring it on. I'll, I'll take this on. I don't see it too much in kids today. We're not teaching it. Because we're not modeling it in the home. Yeah, they're, they're competing on an on a internet or other things, yes. Instead of by, by working harder to do something. Rejoice in all things. Right relationship with God. Give thanks. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we thank you for this opportunity we have uh, to meet here today. We, we pray, Lord, that we have honored you in our, our discussion of some very simple verses. And not a deep message, but, Lord, one that I think that all of us need to be reminded of on the occasional times. Uh, because, Lord, we struggle. We, we become whiners. We, we, we focus on the bad things and the negative, and we don't see all the good. And then we're not enjoying serving Christ and the joy of Jesus that should be the peace, the past understanding, the strength for us all. All the things that you say, Lord... We ignore them and we fail because we're so focused on what we thought should happen or what should have been different. Or, and, and Lord, we, we should just learn to praise you. Praise you for the opportunity you're giving to us to grow and to be stretched, to change and to become something different, to, to see your hand at work and to allow you to receive more glory. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be this way and help us to grow this way in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed your time with us today. I'm glad you came. We'll see you this afternoon. See you.
my dad's fish pond. Hey! They have more trouble with that than they do the other. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. 